right, so it's probably time for another uh, update on the uh, Telefunky here. So I've been going through the circuit very slowly, just going through the whole thing. I looked at all the parts that were replaced, all the capacitors, and checked their values. And uh, these uh, larger caps that were replaced are all good. Um, I've added some Teflon tubing to this one here. I'm going to do it to the other two too just to keep these long leads from touching any other leads like this one here is really close. So I'll fix that uh, pretty soon here. But um, unfortunately I'm going to have to replace these caps again. So <laughs> so the issue is, uh, and I'm not here to bust your chops Jeff, um, figuring out capacitor sizes is pretty confusing and I still get confused by it. But um, yeah, some of the values are the right numbers, but the wrong like order of magnitude, I guess you could say. And that's just because capacitors have this funky um, way of being specified on different schematics and on different in different time eras and on on the parts themselves. So, um, for example, these are supposed to be 0.01 microfarad caps, and these are 0.1 microfarads which would be okay for some of the caps to be ten times what they're supposed to be. It wouldn't really bother anything, but um, uh, it, it, in other cases it will act as sort of a, a high-pass filter and you don't want to change that too much. Um, and on these other ones, uh, a lot of them are part of the little little networks that are responsible for adjusting the, the tone, you know, the treble bass type stuff. So those need to be right, so I'll have to swap those out. And so, yeah, I mean, some of the, I, it took me a while to figure this out, too, because, so here's a schematic. It's really hard to read because it's uh, all zoomed out. But, but some of the values on the schematic specify in uh, micro-microfarads, which hasn't been used in, you know, 50 years. Um, a micro-microfarad is the same as a picofarad. Some of these are specified in nanofarads, uh, like these which is, you know, a thousandth of a microfarad, a picofarad is a thousandth of a nanofarad, and it's just, <laughs> it gets super confusing when you get numbers like 2.7 nanofarads is how many microfarads and how many picofarads, and yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll fix those, it's no big deal, so I've, I've compiled, this is the list, this is the parts list here, and I printed out from the service manual, and I've marked off all the caps that were changed, including the ones on the uh, so-called control board way over here. And uh, yeah, I'll just put uh, put the correct ones in. I have some in, on hand. I'll have to order some other ones. These caps are cheap. You know, they're less less than easily less than a dollar each. Um, I'll get some nicer ones. These some of these are like AC coupling caps for like um, for line service, like uh, you know, for dealing with uh, 60 hertz type stuff and not really meant for audio even though they would work fine um, there are better caps out there for audio though um, Sprog makes these nice ones so I'll pick some of those up and uh, those will be good for this and then there's also a few caps top side that are still original and there's one right here actually there's one there there's one buried in there so I'll swap those out too these are the old wax paper and wax caps um, so yeah, that's what I'll that's what I'm gonna do next. So my original plan was to try to bring up this amplifier and see kind of where it's at, and it would let me uh, measure the tube performance as well. Um, so the uh, the uh, amplifier tubes in here are these GE uh, General Electric. They're ECL86, which is uh, 6GW8. So these are interesting tubes. These were very commonly used in. Um, Telefunkins and other uh, radios. They're sort of an all-in-one amplifier tube in a way. So there's a um, there's a big power tube section and then a small uh, preamp tube section. In fact, um, this one tube is equivalent to an EL84, which you can see is in the same sort of envelope, and one half of a 12AX7 or a ECC 83 is what uh, that would be in the European across the pond there. Um, so yeah, uh, so they, they, they save money by, by instead of having 
you know, two of these and one of these, you could just have two of these. Uh, the only difference is that I think the plate dissipation is a little bit lower on the power tube side. But uh, anyway, so you can see kind of the burn marks on the glass from the um, from the mica in there. It just sort of left a deposit on the glass, which is, you know, definitely a sign of wear, but it's not anything too concerning. That, but this just shows that you know these are not, these are these tubes have some miles on them. They're GE though, which is a little bit surprising. Um, I would have expected it to be a Telefunken labeled tube. Uh, this one was made in Britain, so it's probably actually a Millard tube. But um, yeah, it's it's stamped GE. So these may have been replaced once already. Uh, when you look at the getters, they look pretty good from this angle. But if you look in the light, uh, this one especially, you can see through it. Might be able to see that up on top here. Yeah, probably not. But it's definitely there's quite a bit of getter wear. So yeah, these tubes are probably reach the end of their life. Um, I do have a tube tester. I was going to see if uh, I could test these in there. I don't always trust what the tube tester says, but it would, uh, especially if I don't have a good one to compare against, just to double check the thing. But um, I may do that anyway, just to kind of check it out, since this thing's going to be a bit of work to get it up and running, it turns out. So, um, so yeah, that's the state of those. And there's another tube that's also part of the amplifier, uh, one of the sections, these three sections. This is this is actually a radio tube. It's used as the um, the detector for the AM, FM uh, radio circuitry. Uh, there's two diodes in there, but there's also a preamp section uh, that's used, in this case, in the amplifier circuit on one channel. <laughs> it's very asymmetrical, this thing. Even though it's stereo, there's, there's I think the left channel has this additional gain stage on it, Whereas, but then it also has a bunch of equalization, which I think might be why they needed the extra gain. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely an interesting version of stereo. It's not, the circuit is not very symmetrical at all. It has a lot of, a lot of interesting things put in there. Uh, but, you know, it's all part of the sound, part of the vintage sound of what this was. It's just, early days of stereo, they were trying all kinds of crazy stuff. So, anyway, um... Long story short, this tube looks pretty good, at least at a glance. Uh, there is some evidence. You can see some dark spots there on openings where, uh, you know, electrons have been blasting against the glass there. So there's definitely some wear. I think that's one of the diodes, though, so I'm not sure. So I'll have to test this tube, but I have a feeling this one's okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so another thing, too, I noticed. The, so all the resistors in here all visually look good I checked a few that I could check without taking them out of the circuit and they were good the only two that were visibly burned were uh, these two here this is one of them here's the other one so these are the cathode uh, series resistors on the power tube sections of the amplifier um, these carry quite a bit of current so they get pretty warm and uh, I actually checked them and they're both still within spec but they're pretty burned. Uh, I don't want to leave them in there, so um, I want to replace it with one of these guys. Uh, power resistor, 2 watt power resistor. I like these resistors a lot for audio. Um, and uh, I just happen to have the right value, so it'll be perfect. So two of those. Replace those resistors. I'll take care of that problem. And um, then, yeah, so once I get the caps all switched out, and the new resistors put in and double check everything. Uh, the next stage after that will be slowly bringing up it, bringing up the whole thing section by section and uh, just verifying everything along the way. Uh, that's assuming that uh, I'm assuming that the tubes are still good enough to test the amp with. Uh, they may be totally worn out, but they should still work. That's the thing about tubes; they don't just die completely normally. They just slowly fade away. Um, so even if these are really worn and tired. Um, they should still do something, so we'll find out. You can still get these uh, as long as you don't care about matching, which you definitely don't need to care about matching with this amp, uh, like I said, because it's not symmetrical to begin with. Um, so yeah, we, if we have to get new ones, it's, I think it'll be okay. Um, I haven't looked at any of the radio stuff yet. I'm sort of holding off on that. Uh, I know that the radio performance would suffer due to some of these caps being the wrong values. I'm a little bit concerned about 
swapping caps like these in a radio. Um, radios are very sensitive to not just the part tolerances, but just the physical positions of the parts can throw the radio off. The alignment, the so-called alignment. Um, and there is a procedure to realign it. Uh, I was looking at it briefly. I might be able to realign the AM and shortwave sections, um, but the FM section I, I, I'm not really equipped for. But worst, worst case, it's an analog tuner, so the worst thing is most likely is that just the stations won't be aligned on the dial correctly. So, not a huge deal. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's where I'm at. Just thought I'd give a quick update. And, uh, yeah, see you next time.